wasn't meant to be. She was supposed to have it. I was supposed to have something else. Uh, listen, I'm sure other actresses have felt that way about things I got, you know, that they probably really wanted. Maybe Delta Burke really wanted to be <clears throat> Catherine Wentworth. That's true. That's true. It could very could very well be. Um, I don't know. I don't know. But the way things work out, that was really the only thing I think in my entire career that I wanted so badly that I didn't get. That you didn't get. Yeah. Well, in, in the Dallas reboot, they mentioned <clears throat> that Catherine has passed away at some point. Like, I don't know if you're aware of that. I don't know what season of the reboot it was on TNT. Yeah, but I they heard mentioned that. she passed away throughout the years. <clears throat> I think it was the first season. They kind of addressed it right away. Yeah, I, I heard that. And then uh, somebody had contacted me and said, oh, we were on a blog with the producer talking about your character. And she goes, well, you never know. You know, she could come back. It could all have been a, you know, head fake. And I I kept thinking, well, and then the show got canceled. So don't know. She could have, right. They could have, that would have taken one second <clears throat> to explain Catherine faking her own death for some reason. Oh, and, you know. oh could you imagine? Well, I, she would have too. <laughs> Exactly. It, it was really good. I know there was a lot of politics at TNT and it didn't, you know, yeah. kind of. What was it like working with Victoria Principal? I know you mentioned her earlier. You had a lot of scenes with her and Ken Kirchival, but what was Victoria Principal like to, as an actress to work with? She was, she was, she was fine. I mean, we got, we got along fine. Um, we did an awful lot of work together and she was always just so she was really perfect in what she did. She was always very well prepared, always, always knew what she wanted to do. Um, yeah, she was, she was great. I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't a jokester like Patrick and like Larry and, you know, they would, they would just mess up rehearsals and you're going, guys, really, we got to get this, you know, and, ah, it's fine. So Victoria wasn't like that. She was more of a, you know, methodic ac actress. So it was, right. it was great. Yeah. We worked together a long time. Do you keep, I mean, did you, have you kept in touch like throughout the years? I mean, like I know, hmm. you know, with Larry's passing, like, did you keep in touch with Larry throughout the years? Victoria, anyone from Dallas? I'm sure you no, get that question only, a lot. The only person I think I saw more than anybody was probably Charlene Tilton she she and I would show up at autograph shows and she'd be there and you know we'd talk a lot and and there were events that we were went, were together at I there were never any really close friendships on that show I think there were with Linda Gray and Larry and Patrick and everybody but those of us who were on you know the the supporting players it was kind of like, yeah, but we're not part of the family. And it was, I I guess you just never really made those really deep connections. Right. Which happens on a lot of jobs, you know. It does. It, it really does. I mean, I saw Larry quite a few times afterwards, but it wasn't like we were, I never brought up, I never brought up to him years before Dallas. He was auditioning girls for a movie and I was probably 20 maybe <laughs> maybe 20 and he had the audition over at his house and so I'm uh, I'm knocking on the door and he opens the door and he's in a caftan all the way down to the floor with a glass of wine in his hand <laughs> and he goes darling come in and we sat on the floor and we did meditation and I'm just like going, um, okay. <laughs> I had no idea what was going on. But little did I know, that's who Larry was. Larry was just, he was just a little bit loony. <laughs> so... Does he know that you were that girl? No, or no, wow. no, no, no. There's so many people in this business that have no idea that we had met before so many and I come in contact with them again and I don't say anything but I know exactly Bob Hope was one of them <laughs> there's just there's so many people and they don't have a clue you know it's like hmm, okay 
<laughs> I get it. I it's I feel it out. And then sometimes mm. they say something. It's like, you know, because like I go to a lot of the autograph conventions sure. too. And like, you know, so I mean, I, I've never met you, but I've met like Charlene. And sometimes you're just like, do I tell this person they were on my podcast? Sometimes I do if we're having a moment. And then other times I'm like, right. there's so many people here. This is like, yeah. Zoom, yeah. let's just like, but I liked it usually, but I, but I get it. Well, after Dallas, I mean, you also, we worked on like glitter with Aaron Spelling. You were on Melrose Place yeah. for three. Like, mm-hmm. did you, what was it like being on an Aaron Spelling project? Did oh, you- I, I got to tell you, I knew Aaron. I I did the original Burke's Law back in 1964 with Aaron. And I did an episode then. He never forgot me. He remembered me all those years. And I, I remember many, many times I would audition for him. And, you know, he said, I'm going to find a project for you. I'm going to find something for you. I'm looking, I'm looking. And um, Glitter came along and I was contracted to CBS at the time. I was under contract to CBS and Lorimar. And Aaron made a deal for me to do Glitter he went to CBS and said, I know I'm ABC, but I need to borrow her, you know. And so I was doing two television shows, two network shows at the same time on two different networks, which nobody had done. And Aaron was so loyal and so wonderful. He signed me to that contract and he said, I'm going to make sure that you're on The Love Boat every year, Fantasy Island every year. Um, hotel every year. He made he made your life secure in the sense that you're not forgotten. And you know you saw that with all the old actors that he brought in. And he was so wonderful and respectful and very, very honored that any of these older actors would would come on the show. He made them feel so special. He made all of us feel so special. Out of everybody in the business, he was a class act. I mean, a really class act. I mean, it was a, it kind of got to be a joke at one point where you'd have 20 motorhomes lined up in front of the sound stage and every star had their motorhome, you know. And and you'd get silver delivered to you as a gift and you'd have red roses in your trailer in the morning. I mean, it was fabulous. I mean, I can't I can't say enough about Aaron. He was he was so good. And he remembered me from the time I was 10 years old. Wow. And he did. I mean, he you were on Love Boat a lot. You were on Fantasy Island. Hotel. I mean, he he yep. made good. You know, it wasn't just lip service, as we know, no, can happen in this no, business. It wasn't. Do you have memories? I mean, I'm a huge, I'm a huge Dallas fan, but I'm a huge Melrose Place fan too. I mean, I know it was a short lived experience yeah. for you, but like, do you have memories of working with like Patrick Muldoon and Josie Bissett and being on Melrose? Oh, for that? sure. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I had, I had not done a lot of television for a while at that point. And I came back to, to do it and, and, and television had changed a lot. You know, there was, there was, it was faster. It was Okay, cut, move on. You didn't you didn't delve into the scenes where you'd go, you know what? Let's try that again another way. They didn't have time for any of that. So everybody there was pretty much married to their characters. They knew what they wanted to do. Um, Patrick and I got along great, even though 